Yeah, sounds good to me. All right, Ed. All right. Well, thank you, everybody who's joining us out there on Facebook Live. Uh, this is, should be a really interesting session for those of you looking at colleges, uh, hoping to get a better understanding about Bloomsburg University and some of the interesting things we have to offer. Many of you uh, may have gotten a lot of literature from us in the mail already or, or looked online. We wanted to give you a little bit of a, a deeper dive today and take you into one of the academic corners of our, our campus. Uh, my name is Chris Lathos. I'm our Associate Vice President of Admissions here at Bloomsburg University. I'm here with Dr. James Brown. He is our Dean of the College of Liberal Arts. And, you know, that's, that's a really interesting uh, title. I know you have a really interesting job, Jim. And, and we talk about in academia uh, about a, a college dean every day. It's a very familiar term. But if you're shopping for a college, you might not know what a dean is. So can, can you tell us a little bit about um, what a dean is and, and, and what your job looks like on a daily basis? Well, sure. I mean, you know, most broadly, a dean, if you're a dean, you are, I think you're like the, the, a leader from a, among equals. I mean, I was, a, I was a professor once upon a time. Now I'm, I'm the dean of a college that, uh, and, and uh, so uh, basically I lead the college, the College of Liberal Arts, which is one of four that we have uh, at Bloomsburg University. It is uh, one of the two larger colleges. We have 13 departments, uh, you know, and, and 17 or 18 academic uh, programs in there. But, uh, but you know, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a management position, but it's also, it's, it's about uh, leading the direction academically uh, for, for the college uh, and for the students that are there. It's really about, uh, about making sure that the, the resources are there for uh, the, uh, the, the, the professors to do their best work when they're teaching classes and for students to have the, the maximum opportunities for transformational experiences while they're in college. And that's the, that's the fun part about the job every day. Um, when, when I was young and maybe when you were young too, there were a lot of movies about college and invariably there was a dean in those movies and he was there generally to uh, look angry when uh, people were uh, having too much fun or something like that. And uh, I, I laugh when I see that because it's, it's, it's really not very much, uh, it's not so much like that as one might imagine. We're really here to, you know, I, I, we, we love interacting. I'd say I speak for the other deans too. We love the opportunity to interact with students and we're really there to, uh, to uh, put the tools in their hands to be successful while they're here. So you're you're a you're a professor you're you're a manager you're you're in charge of the direction of the the College of Liberal Arts um, I, that you know to my mind brings up two questions there first of all what is liberal arts and second of all you know what are some of the departments um, that are are in your college that you're in charge of okay well in terms of liberal arts uh, there's something called liberal education it goes back to the uh, Greek and Roman times. And that was when democracy was being invented. It was a very limited form of democracy uh, compared to you know, what we have today. And you know, the, 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 just, the idea was that if people were going to be allowed to help run their country, that they should know things. Uh, and that's what liberal education was designed to do, to help people, to give people a context for leadership and decision-making. That's what it was in the, in the uh, in, in the Greek and Roman times, and that's what it is today. And the College of Liberal Arts is, a, is at our institution, a collection of departments in the humanities and the arts and the social sciences. Uh, so like I say, we have 13 departments. Um, in the humanities, we have departments like, but I'm not gonna list all 13 because somebody will be counting on their fingers and I'll leave one out. So I'm not gonna do that. Don't even start counting, okay? So in the humanities, things like English, which is my own field, uh, history, languages, things like that, philosophy. Uh, in the social sciences, you would have social work, uh, criminal justice, political science, economics, uh, which some people might be, might be surprised to learn is a social science in the College of Liberal Arts. And then in the, uh, in the arts, you have uh, music, uh, you, know, you have uh, theater, uh, we have a, a very vibrant minor in dance, uh, of course, the visual arts, lots to brag about there, uh, which I, I hope will come up at some point in our conversation. So th those are some of the examples. It gives you a sense of the range 
in the college. And we have a, we have a lot of a really wide breadth uh, of programs. And every student, regardless of major, who comes to Bloomsburg University is going to be taking a lot of courses in our college because that's how the that's how it's all set up. And that's so interesting too. You you of course are a product of a uh, liberal arts education. You're an English professor although you're a, a very successful leader on campus and manager right now, I, I suspect that your, your heart and your roots are in the classroom. And, and that's um, you know, really where, where um, your, your mission and, and energy derive from the, the students that are on campus. Well, very much. And, and actually, you know, when I moved into, when I moved out of the classroom and, and, and moved into being a dean, uh, it, I, I was really conscious of what I was losing. Uh, which is daily contact with, with you know, a, a group of students every semester, teaching several classes and, and really working with them every day. But the, the, the trade-off there is the range of influence you have. And, and, and what, I, what I try to focus on now is, is doing things that are really going to benefit large groups of students who, who choose Bloomsburg University. What do, what do they want? What do they need? What, uh, how are we going to prepare them uh, you know, we're going to be handing them the keys to the world at some point, and I want them to know how to drive. Uh, you know, because they're 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 going to be running the show here before while while you and I are uh, um, playing checkers uh, at some point in the future, and uh, and so I, I want them to be as well prepared as possible for that. Liberal education really is the key to that, and that that's uh, those are the majors we have, and it's also the the kind of kind of education that we have across Bloomsburg University. I mean, I'm saying we're talking about liberal education very broadly, of course. Our business majors are getting a liberal education. Our nursing majors are getting a liberal education. And certainly our philosophy majors are, are getting a, a liberal, a liberally based education. Yeah, and it's it really is about preparing tomorrow's leaders and innovators. And, and many have called, you know, the, the liberal arts portion of, the, of a degree, the Swiss army knife of degrees. It, it allows you to go into uh, many different realms um, and, and know a lot uh, of different angles and, and, and facets of, of many different jobs. Um, really serves as a fundamental uh, background and basis uh, for preparing you for, for today's world. And I, and I know you fully believe that. I do. Uh, and, and, you know, when I went to college, uh, many in, in the previous century, uh, I'm the first person in my family ever to go to college, okay? And, and like, like many people who, who work and, and teach at Bloomsburg University. Uh, and, and, uh, and my parents, my dad pretty much dropped me off and said, well, this is on you. It's, uh, these are your choices. Uh, and and uh, I didn't know what to major in, but I was very good at English. And I, I, really, I really wanted to do that. And I, I, I think my parents thought I was going to major in, in, in a, choose a major that had the name of the job in the name of the major, uh, like many of them do, and <clears throat> most of the ones in our college do not. Um, you know, I finally told them like a year and a half later that I was majoring in English, and, uh, you know, they were, they were pretty happy about it. They said, uh, well, this is, you know, this is, you have to do, you have to follow your passion, do something you're good at, and uh, the, the other parts of it are going to, are going to develop, but you want to talk about leadership, uh, all of the departments I mentioned there give you perspectives on this. And you, you, your first job out of college with a liberal arts degree is, is not going to be your, your final job or even your final career, right? Uh, the jobs that I trained for or I would have trained for uh, and, and, and the jobs that I had when I was right out of college barely even exist now uh, because things have changed that much. A liberal education prepares you for those changes. I would hate to graduate from college being trained to do one thing, uh, because that one thing, who's to say that the way the economy changes and the way technology changes, who's to say that job is going to exist by the time you're ready to retire? Yeah, uh, it's all about flexibility and, and uh, preparation, and, and um, you know, make sure making sure that you you have you are built for the future, future that's right. proof, if you will. That's right. Um, you know, parents, for parents that may be watching us, I know a lot of them have, uh, you know, maybe some concerns, if, especially if their, their child is, uh, nobody in their family has been to college, their child is the first one going to college, um, you know, they might be looking at dropping off their student uh, on campus next year, and um, 
you know, they're nervous about who's who's going to take care of my student. There's my student needs guidance, needs help. Um, and, you know, I, I know you you derive a lot of uh, satisfaction and um, pleasure out of out of making sure our students um, find their way and uh, graduate in four years. That's um, right. That's the plan. You're kind of the point person, I, I believe, for that kind of thing. Right. Well, let's acknowledge our faculty and staff. OK, yeah. Uh, because because everybody on campus, if you walk around and ask people, why are you here? The answer is going to be for the students. And, and it, I mean, it's, it's, it sounds like marketing stuff, right? But it's really true. And it's, this is not something I've worked at a lot of different colleges and universities. I've taught at, I've taught at different schools. I've, I was a dean at a different school. And that is what makes Bloomsburg different it, it, because people really do understand. And this goes from the president uh, through to, to the staff at every level, uh, you know, it's a, it's a commitment to student success. And, you know, part, there are parts of dropping off your kid at school, kid, part of it, sorry, you know, my, my kids went to, adult. yeah, my, my young adult offspring both attended Bloomsburg University. So I, I, I kind of tend to, I, I tend to see things in those terms and I, uh, pardon me if I, if I talk like a, a an old dad, uh, but, there are parts of dropping your your son or daughter or, or, or off at at, uh, at at college that are different from when I went to college. For one thing, they all have phones in their pockets. Uh, we had one phone in the middle of the the uh, residence hall lobby for you know fifty or sixty uh, young men living on our hall. And uh, when the payphone rang, somebody would answer it, and everybody would. Uh, you know, holler until somebody went to answer. So there's, there's there, there are different, uh, there are some differences now. But, you know, the thing is, there are also people you can talk to. There, there's, there's student support for, for academics. Uh, there, there, there's, there's support for students with, uh, with emotional needs, with, uh, with health needs, et cetera. So there really is, I mean, I, I think the university really takes very seriously its responsibility as as being the, 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 the entity that is looking out for the well-being across all the different dimensions, uh, uh, you know, including academics. Of course, my area is primarily in academics, but there is no way you're going to be successful academically if you have needs elsewhere in that hierarchy of needs uh, that, uh, that, are, that are more important than this. Psychology is one of our... Uh, one of our big uh, majors as well, and uh, where you would probably learn about that hierarchy. Nice, nice work weaving in Maslow. Um, you, you know, and for those of you wondering, a payphone is a contraption that you used to put coins into to <laughs> make a phone call. Uh, exactly. ask, I almost, uh, I almost. You can uh, ask your parents about that one. Uh, we've been talking at, at a very high level about, um, you know, what you can do with a liberal arts degree, but let's get down to some specifics here you know i mean kids want to go to law school they they want to they want to go into uh mass media um you know what what can what kind of i mean your your the majors in your department reach across all kinds of boundaries to fill out uh, the technical skills somebody in computer science might uh be acquiring in a very specific major or or complement uh, those business skills, um, you know, what kind of things are, are folks studying to, to go to law school or, or to uh, even med school right? Uh, with a liberal arts degree? Well, that's right. There, I mean, the possibilities here. With regard, I mean, let's, let's start with medical school. I mean, uh, you have to take science courses to go to, to be admitted to med school. I think, I think I'm pretty, pretty safe in saying that. But what you major in doesn't matter so much as, as what, how you prepare yourself. So there are people with liberal arts degrees who attend uh, medical school. We have a, uh, uh, you know, we have we have many uh, alumni who majored maybe in communication studies, who ended up uh, going to to med school. But you know, I think what makes our College of Liberal Arts special and different from maybe uh, similar entities, whether they're called College of Arts and Sciences or College of Humanities and Arts and whatever those are at any different school is our commitment to building that bridge from the degree, from the education to the place of employment. You know, we have this professional you 
promise, this, this, this commitment. And wh where do you see that? It's fine to say you're, you're going to do something. Uh, you know, we have, this, we have the, the deal center for, for law school preparation. If a student wants, if a student thinks that, uh, that they want to attend law school, they, they go to the deal center, they talk to the person who directs it, who's fantastic. She's an attorney and a professor herself. And starting in your freshman year, starting in your first year of college, you're going to start thinking, well, what do I need to do? How can I position myself to be ready to apply for law school? Maybe get into a three plus three, plus three program or, or something similar so that your last year of college is also your first year of law school. Law, schools, law school can be expensive. There are law schools that are lining up to give our, our, our graduates scholarships, as you know, for law school. And uh, there are opportunities to sort of double up on that senior year. So your, 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 your first year of law school actually counts as your senior year of college. Sounds pretty complicated. It is. I can't explain it any more than that. That's why we have the Deal Center for Law School Preparation. And that's, uh, that was a, that's a, 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 a donor uh, who was a who was a, a, an alumnus of, of Bloomsburg University, uh, you know, has, has set this up because he cares about this and he wants our students to, uh, to make that connection. So that's, that's, a, that's a great example. And it's an example with a name, but it represents our commitment more fully. We have something else. You mentioned uh, media. Uh, we have a center called uh, the Confer Radio Talent Institute. This is an opportunity for students. I don't care whether you want to be in television or whether you're going to do uh, emergent media, which is one of the, the most popular tracks in our media and journalism uh, major, which would do things like uh, it's the kind of thing we're doing now. This is, a, this is emergent media. And I'm glad there are people who know about it so that I can just turn my computer on and it works. Uh, but uh, we have the Confer uh, Radio Talent Institute where it's actually designed to prepare students to work in radio and they, they, they come to they come here in the summer and we'll have an intensive 10 day uh, sort of a boot camp on all of the things you need to do, know to be a radio professional, including advertising sales, as well as the on air things. So it's a tremendous skill set we're presenting. And you take those skills, you take that on your resume and you go to apply for a job you're at the top of the pile because you've had unique experiences that make you different from all the other people who have very similar qualifications to your own. A couple of great examples there. I love that about Bloomsburg University, you know, taking, taking students as they are at 18 and turning them into a, a professional version of themselves in four years. We, we call it professional you and, and um, you know, certainly that's, that's a cornerstone of of the educational process in, in all of our departments. Um, you know, uh, I, I've heard so much about, you know, students who maybe want to go to law school or students who have a very specific idea in mind. Um, what we're seeing a lot of today, Dr. Brown, is students who are showing up here and they're not sure what they want to do. Um, they call, you know, they, you might hear the term undecided or undeclared, what might that student, what might a path be that first year for that student who comes in here and what, what classes would they have and then how would they ultimately, um, you know, become a social worker, for right. example? Well, you know, if, if we, we talk about it, you pointed this out to me at the beginning and I've been, I've been thinking about it, uh, you know, we, we talk about this stuff because we work with it every day. And I think when I was getting ready to go to college and I didn't really talk to anybody who had been to college before me, I expected I would choose a major and all my courses would be in that major. But if you're in a Bachelor of Arts program, roughly a third of your courses are going to be in your major. Another third will be what we call uh, general education. Uh, you know, it's, it's the general, it's, 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 it's my core or, or general education or some place, every place calls it something a little bit different. Uh, but that's roughly a third of the courses you're going to take. And if you are, if you haven't declared a major yet, uh, you'll probably be taking courses that will satisfy those general education requirements. And those are courses that are all across the university. You'll take maybe a geography class, maybe a, maybe a social work class, uh, maybe a math class. Some of that will be according to your interest and some of it will be according to 
the requirements that we think uh, you should be taking so that you can graduate from here prepared for a variety, uh, just what we we're talking about before, prepared for a variety of different kinds of experiences. So that, you know, but ideally, even people who maybe uh, haven't decided what they're going to major in yet, they may take something, they, they, they probably have interests and they'll have the opportunity to take something in their interests. Maybe you'll take a philosophy class. Uh, is it because you plan to be a philosopher? You know, not necessarily, but why would you take a philosophy class? Maybe because ethics is important and that's what we study in philosophy. Maybe you're going to go into the medical field. Bioethics is tremendously important. You turn on the television, you listen to the news, you listen to people discussing things. Um, we're talking about that stuff every day. I mean, more now than ever uh, with regard to this, uh, this pandemic. You know, what about vaccines, et cetera? This is, it, it, this is philosophy. This is philosophy as it's applied. But you're gonna take these classes in a wide variety of things. And maybe you talk to your professors, you find things you're good at, find things you're interested in. It is perfectly okay, perfectly okay, not to have declare a major when you come to Bloomsburg University. You're going to work towards that. And you're gonna be thinking, you, you, there, there's, a, there's a very specific set of things you want to be doing to work your way toward the major you're interested in. But you don't have to have the course of your life planned out at the age of, of 18 or 17. Um, it's just, I mean, if you, if you think you have your whole life planned out, the one thing I can tell you is it's gonna go, it's, it's gonna take you in a bunch of different directions. And it's what I did. I was undeclared for a while. I took an English class, I took another English class. But one day the professor said, you know, you're pretty good at this. Maybe you should think about majoring in English. I said, right, well, I, no, I need to do something I can get a job with. And he said, you need to come to my office. And we sat down and we talked about it. And I'm telling you now what he told me in 1982. I just told you how old I was. Uh, but uh, but that's, that's basically the conversation I had. I was six at the time, believe me. <laughs> no, I was a traditionally aged student. Uh, but but that's that's the way it is, and you know I, I I love working with undeclared students, and you know if you have questions if you're here and you have questions my name is James Brown it is an easy name to remember uh, if you uh, you know just because there's there are famous people with that name. Uh, How do you feel I, tonight? Dr. I feel Brown? good. Okay, thank uh, you. Yeah, well you, you knew I would, uh, but uh, don't get me started. Uh, but uh, but. Uh, come and find me and talk to me. So, so, say you want to set up half an hour to, to talk to me about uh, some of the ideas you have about your about what you want, might want to major in. I love talking to students. That's the one thing I miss the most about uh, uh, about you know when I was teaching as opposed to what I'm doing now. You know, so we can have that conversation. And if you're a if you're a family member or a supporter uh, and you want to have that conversation, I will insist that the student uh, join us for that conversation. We're not going to plan the student's future without the student in the room, okay? Uh, virtual room or, or hopefully a real room in the, in the near future. But let's have that conversation because I have a passion for this conversation because I believe in the programs we offer and I think they're the best. I think they're the best. And, and I, know, I know management, your management responsibilities have, have somewhat uh, removed you from that uh, daily face-to-face -face contact with students. But my understanding is that you'll see students for a variety of reasons Throughout the year, and I've heard I've heard people mention this this dean's list. Um, is you know there is there a second list? I mean, well, yeah, talk that's, a little yeah, about that's, the dean's list for me. Now, the dean's what, what list, happens when we talk about making the dean's list? That means you have a great grade point average, and you're you're one of the top students. And I will I have said, and I've actually said to students I've mentored, you know, the dean has two lists. Which one do you want to be on? Uh, uh, but uh, and uh, but yeah, it's it's. You know, honestly, uh, and, and every student I work with, and every student who comes to see me is not a is not a uh, an, a, an a average student. Uh, it, you know, so nobody's good at everything. I don't know. Maybe you were a four student. I was not. Uh, I was pretty good at uh, at, uh, at at English and related subjects, and I was good at a few other things too. I actually got an A in both of my physical education classes, so I technically had a, a higher grade point average in phys ed, as we called it uh, back then, than I did in my own major of English. So judo and folk social and square dancing. Okay. Yeah, I got you an A. Not to uh, come up behind you too quickly and provoke a, some kind of a 
muscle memory reaction from your judo or, days or an outbreak of brown. clogging <laughs> well speaking of your your days as a student i mean you know you you started undeclared and, and you kind of found your way you found yourself you found your talents at college which is is really what we we would hope for everyone but you're you're an english professor um just a little bit about you uh what's your area of specialty uh, what did you do your dissertation on to get your doctoral degree in English? Um, and uh, do you do you still enjoy it today? Do, is that degree still paying dividends um, at this phase in, in your um, life? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, I, uh, I, I ended up teaching British literature and I actually taught uh, composition as well. Uh, you know, freshman writing, first year writing. And I taught a lot of British literature, and uh, my my field is actually Irish literature, uh, which is not the same as British literature. And if you study a little bit of history, uh, you can you can get into you can get into some of that. Uh, I did my dissertation on a writer named James Joyce, uh, who was a 20th century Irish writer. He uh, he wrote his uh, major works in the uh, 19 teens, 20s, and 30s. And uh, he's best known for uh, some books that might make uh, might make students cringe a little bit. Uh, there's a there's a, a book called Dubliners, one called A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man, uh, and uh, Ulysses. Ulysses is is uh, in, in my estimation his masterpiece. Um, but there's a there's a short story that's in a lot of anthologies, a short story called Araby, which some people might have encountered. But I taught when I taught I taught all of British literature. I love teaching Beowulf. Uh, you know, uh, Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, you know, really going back to the, the earliest days of English literature right up through, you know, really the 20th and 21st uh, century. Are you still reading or doing any writing today or? Uh... Well, creative writing was never my, was, was never my uh, forte as, uh, as I would say, but, uh, but I, I do still, I, I still do some scholarship. I still uh, work on uh, my interest I have an interest in Irish uh, detective fiction, and there's an author, a contemporary author called uh, Tana French that I, she's an Irish writer that I think very highly of. There's a uh, a guy named Adrian McKinty who's who's very good, uh, and and yeah, I still I still uh, read pretty uh, pretty voraciously. Now that I'm not teaching, I get to read more actually because I don't have to reread everything every semester. I mean, when you're teaching, it's like being an English major because you have all these assignments. I'm not gonna assign a novel and not read that novel again myself because I, I need to know more than, uh, I, I need to remember the characters' names. Uh, but yeah, I, I love teaching that stuff. Uh, Pride and Prejudice, I mean, um, Wuthering Heights, wonderful. Um, so <clears throat> we have 56 amazing academic majors uh, out there. We of course can't get to every one of them tonight, but. Um, you know, from an English perspective, in case we have anybody who's thinking about uh, an English degree, um, what would you like them to have read before the first day of an English program at Bloomsburg University? Well, you know, I, I think uh, what they were assigned in high school English classes would be a good start. Uh, but, uh, but be prepared to read some of it again and recognize that you can read the same novel. I mean, I've read Ulysses by James Joyce, I, 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 I wanna say I've read it 20 times. I mean, just over the course of my life and because I wrote a dissertation on it. Uh, and there's something there for me every time. Uh, but, uh, but you know, you have to have a, ideally, I won't even say you have to, but ideally you have a passion for reading. And I used to think that, well, I mean, I liked reading Lord of the Rings. That was my favorite novel. Uh, I mean, it was, it was my absolute favorite novel. And then I, I, I got to college and I don't know if I'm gonna be, be allowed to talk about Lord of the Rings because I think we're supposed to talk about serious literature. It's actually about the way you read. It's not so much about what you read, it's about the way you read. You read, you, you read for a level of understanding, you read to understand the way the work of literature works as a coherent whole. You can apply that kind of critical thinking and that's the key phrase there, critical thinking. You can apply it to, to a folk tale, a fairy tale. You can apply it to a popular novel. Uh, you can apply it to Hunger Games. 
You can apply it to 50 shades of gray and you can see some, some works are going to reward that kind of reading more than others. I don't, I think I named some novels just now that I could not read 50 times. Okay. But it's okay to love what you love. And you can bring that to, uh, to the, these classes and broaden your perspective from there. And that's what I want. from. That is what's to. so interesting about a college degree, especially at Bloomsburg University, is that taking courses in, in, in all these various academic departments, you're being trained for a job, but you're also learning how to take in life and enjoy things and, um, you know, it's broaden your horizons. And um, that's, that's what's so interesting and exciting uh, about a college degree and, and something we live, eat and breathe here at Bloomsburg University. Um, you know, we're both uh, professionals, Dr. Brown, um, as indicated by our sport coats. If you have a sport coat on, you must be a professional. You must work all the time, but we're just human beings under these sports coats. I read the applications, um, you shepherd students through our, our academic programs, but um, we're just people at the end of the day. Uh, what do you like to do with your free time, if you have any? Well, uh, yes, thank you for asking the question. I am, uh, I am a, a, an avid woodworker. Uh, you know, I, I, it, when, I'm, when, I'm not, uh, when I'm not doing my job, I'm out in the wood shop, hence my uh, flannel shirt, because uh, uh, when we're through here, I'll be going out, turning the heat on and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and making some sawdust. Uh, so that's, that's what I do for fun. Uh, I am also, uh, and this, uh, you know, I'm also in interested in hobby board games. It's not like Monopoly and stuff like that. It kind of goes, start with Settlers of Catan and take it to ride and go from there. Uh, my wife and I both, uh, love playing these games and, uh, my, my, my day zoom setting, I, I went for something a little classier today and in, in holiday spirit, but, uh, I, as, as you know, my, my day zoom setting has, a large shelf of, uh, of board games in the background. So those are the two things. And I'd be out in the wood shop if the Wi-Fi were better. Uh, but uh, that's what I like to do with my spare time. Uh, well, that's great, Dr. Brown. We're coming up on the half hour mark. And um, as, as we all know, with uh, these virtual events, um, you know, all of us have a limited uh, time that, that we want to sit, especially at the end of the day here. So I won't go too much longer. Um, if, if anybody's tuned in on Facebook Live and have any questions, we do have somebody uh, checking that on Facebook for us. Uh, happy to take questions. Um, I'd also uh, recommend if you're college shopping right now and you're thinking about Bloomsburg University, it's a great time to apply. Um, we are expecting around 2,000 students for uh, next year's incoming freshman class. Uh, we, we've already got uh, close to 800 committed students uh, for the class, and, and uh, we would love for you to be um, to be part of that class next year. It's a good time to apply at admissions.bloomu.edu and um, start shopping around for those majors. We have 60, 56 programs that you can choose from, not only in the College of Liberal Arts, but uh, uh, we have a College of Science and Technology, a College of Business, College of Education, and also for students that are looking for a little extra challenge, we have an honors college. Um, that our honors college is growing by leaps and bounds. Um, you know, uh, most every single one of the students who uh, come into our honors college uh, will be getting some kind of a scholarship award. And now, now is a really good time to apply because we're we are offering scholarships right now. Um, so if you're thinking about it, we'd love to um, love to see your application. And um, you know. Operators are standing by. If you have any questions, please give us a call at the admissions office or, or drop it into Facebook um, or shoot us an email. I don't see any questions, so we're going to wrap it up there. Dr. Brown, thanks so much for uh, your time tonight, letting us get to know you. Um, and uh, hopefully uh, the folks tuning in out there will see you uh, next summer during orientation or uh, when their student is going to college. Yep. Good night, everyone. Thanks so much.